good afternoon everyone hello everyone so connect quickly today we are going to do the previous year iit jam questions from solutions on colligative properties i'm sure you all must be aware of the basics of this topic so today we are directly going to be doing the questions quickly connect ask your friends to also join today's session if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet subscribe to our channel hi dona hello hello like this video share it with your friends so that more and more people can join in in today's session today we will be discussing the previous year iit jam questions from solutions and colligative properties okay so let us begin with the questions for today the very first question for today is for an ideal solution formed by mixing of pure a and b what should be the value for delta h mixture we have an ideal solution we have an ideal solution which is being formed by mixing pure a and pure b so what should be the delta h mixture value for this solution this is a very easy question see such questions also come in exams so you cannot skip thinking that such questions are very easy and they probably wouldn't come quickly write the answer to this in the comments if you know the answer let me know what do you think should be the answer for this question so we know that in case of ideal solutions the strength of bond aa is equals to the strength of bond bb which is equals to the newly formed bond strength which is of ab so we know that in case of ideal solutions in case of ideal solutions we know that okay Pulkit says that A part is the right answer. Okay, more people tell me what do you think should be the correct answer? Okay, so we know that in ideal solution, the strength of A A bond is equals to the strength of B B bond, which in turn is also equal to the strength of A B bond. Therefore, we must remember that in case of ideal solutions, delta H mixture is equals to zero. Dona also says the answer should be A. Yes, the correct answer is A. The correct answer for this question will be A. That is, delta H mixture for an ideal solution will be zero. Rishab Sharma says A. Yes, A part is the correct answer. This is the explanation. You can go through this later. I have already explained you how this is supposed to happen. Now we will move on to the next question. <coughs> so, what does this question say? addition of 1 g of a compound to 10 g of water increases the boiling point by 0.3 degree celsius uh, the amount of compound needed to prepare a 500 ml or 0.1 molar solution is so what are what all we have been given in this question we have been given the amount of solute the amount of solvent over here and we have been given the increase in boiling point which is 0.3 degree celsius and what do we have to find out then we have to find out how much compound will be needed to prepare a solution of either 500 ml or 0.1 molarity all right now solving this question first of all in questions like these the best way to go about is writing all of the values which have been given in the question it makes the solving very very easy so i'm going to begin by writing down what all has been given in the question okay then it it will become very easy for us to solve it so how do we do it how do we do it i will write whatever has been given in the question so 
uh, what is the amount of solute that we have been given i will represent the solute by wb the weight of solute i will represent it by wb it is given as 1 gram the weight of solvent will be represented by wa which is given as 10 grams okay so weight of solute is 1 gram, weight of solvent is 10 gram and we know, here they have written the increase in boiling point. So the increase means we have been given delta Eb, it has been given as 0 0.3 degree Celsius. Alright, now we know that, we know that the fall, now we have to calculate what? We first will have to calculate the molar mass of this compound. So for that, we will use the formula for elevation in boiling point, which is delta Tb is equals to I into Kb into M. Now here, I stands for the Van't Hoff factor. Kb is the ebullioscopic constant or molar elevation constant. Okay. So, the formula for this is delta Tb equals I into Kb into M and M stands for molality. Now, if I start putting in the values over here, we know that the value of Tb is already given. So, it will be 0 0.3. It is equals to I. Okay. So, one very important thing to note over here is given assume negligible dissociation or association of the compound. So when any such statement is written in the question that the association or dissociation is negligible, in cases like these, we will take the value of i is equals to 1. So i will be taken as 1 into the value of kb is also given here in the question. So we will directly straight away put away the value, put the value 0 0.513. And now, what is molality? What is the formula for molality? We know that the formula for molality is the number of moles of solute. We know that molality is moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg. Yes. So the formula for molality is this. Now we also know that number of moles can be written as given mass upon molar mass. Okay, so I'm going to substitute these values here. So putting in the values, number of moles of solute, I will put these values here. So WB has been given as one gram. All right, we have to calculate the molar mass MB into the mass of solvent has been given as 10 grams. But we need to put the value in kg. Therefore, we will divided by 1000, so it will go in the numerator. So this is how we will calculate the value of the molar mass from here. So molar mass will come out to be 0 0.3 into 10 divided by 0 0.513 into 1000. Now quickly, quickly solve the value for the molar mass. Take out your calculators and solve the value for molar mass. Let me know in the live comments what should be the value for molar mass from here. So upon solving this, Okay, actually I have inverted the values. The molar mass should actually come out to be Mb is equal to 0 0.513 into 1000 divided by 0 0.3 into 10. Okay, from here we will get the value of molar mass very easily. Okay, let's see the value of molar mass is coming out to be 171 gram per mole. All right. This will be the value for molar mass. Now, what do we have to calculate? Now that we have calculated the molar mass, 
we have to find out the amount of compound needed to prepare a 500 ml or 0.1 molar solution. Now, what is the formula for molarity? We know that the formula for molarity is equal to moles of solute. It is the moles of solute upon volume of solution in liter. This is the formula for molarity. It can further be written as given mass upon molar mass. If the volume has been given in ml, then we will further divide it by 1000. This is the formula for molarity. What molarity do we have to calculate? 0 0.1. Okay. So we will substitute the value 0 0.1 here is equal to, we have to calculate the weight into 1000. We just calculated the molar mass as 171. Okay, we calculated the molar mass as 171 and we will substitute the value of solution uh, volume here, which is 500 ml. Okay, now on solving this, we will be easily able to calculate the amount of substance which is needed for the formation of a solution with molarity. 0.1. Quickly solve this and let me know in the comments what should be the answer for WB. Solve it and let me know the answer for WB. Finally, the answer will, for WB is going to come out to be it is going to come out to be 8.55 gram once you solve it. Alright. It will come out to be 8.55 gram. So this is how we did this question. Srikant, this class will happen every day at 1 p.m. only. You can connect at 1 p.m. and solve the previous year IIT jam questions with me. Now moving on to the next question. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video and share it with your friends so that they can also solve these previous year IIT jam questions with you. Okay, now moving on to the next question. See, what does this question say over here? What does this question say? An aqueous solution containing one gram per liter of a polymer exerts osmotic pressure of 4 torr. Okay, it says an aqueous solution containing 1 gram per liter of a polymer exerts osmotic pressure of 4 torr at 300 kel Kelvin. So we have been given the concentration or strength here. All right, we have been given the osmotic pressure of 4 torr. We have been given the temperature at which it is happening and the value of R. What do we have to calculate? we have to calculate the molar mass of the polymer. Again, in this question, we will go about using the same approach. That is, first of all, you must write what has been given in the question. It, may, it makes solving the question very, very easy. So, we have been given the concentration over here. We have been given the concentration. I can say concentration or strength that has been given over here as one gram per liter. All right. And the osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure, you know very well that it is represented by pi. Osmotic pressure has been given as four torr. Now, you know that we use pressure in terms of ATM mostly. So I'm going to convert this four torr into ATM. So we know that 760 torr is equals to one ATM. So, 4 torr will actually be equal to 4 upon 760 ATM. All right. So, 4 torr can be converted into 8 by 760. Now, let's see what else has been given here. We have been...
we have been given the temperature as 300 kelvin now we have to calculate the molar mass so how do we do that i am going to write the formula for osmotic pressure what is the formula for osmotic pressure it is pi equals i into crt okay so substituting the value of osmotic pressure for the upon 760 equals i will be one only the concentration you know the concentration is actually if i have to write it is number of moles upon volume concentration is number of moles upon volume okay and number of moles is what number of moles is given mass upon molar mass now on substituting these values here i will get i know that the given mass has been given as 1 gram per liter per liter means 1 liter and here will come the molecular mass okay and then we will multiply it by the value of r which has been given into 300 on solving this now we can easily solve this for mv all right how do we do that it will become so sorry everyone i think that the screen got unshared somehow i will take you through the question again for the part for which the screen got unshared so i was telling you that in the question we were given the concentration all right that is 1 gram per liter we have been given the osmotic pressure as photon we have been given the temperature as 300 kelvin then we have been given the value of r as 0.082 we have to calculate the molar mass from here so now first of all we will begin by writing the values which have been given which is concentration equals 1 gram per liter then we have the osmotic pressure as photo or we know that we always use pressure in terms of atm therefore i am going to convert this torr into atm by dividing it by 760 now i will use the formula pi equals i crt your i is the one half factor c is the concentration r is the gas constant and t is the temperature on substituting the values i will get 4 upon 70 here in the osmotic pressure is equals to i which will be 1 into we know that concentration is actually equals to number of moles upon volume all right it is number of moles by volume now here the number of moles can be written as the given weight upon molecular weight now given weight is 1 gram per liter so we substituted the value here and per liter means from here we get 1 liter now we will multiply it by the given value of r in the question and the temperature 300 from here we can easily calculate the value of molar mass now this will come out to be 0.082 into 300 divided by 4 into 760 now this is the final way you can look at your and on solving this this is the answer that you will get this is the answer that you will get i hope it is clear to everyone if you understood the question please write yes in the comments and let me know if you understood it or not let me know in the comments if you understood the question or not
I hope everyone understood this question. So the answer for this is C. You were right. All of these people who were saying Raj Gupta, Ankit Mondal, the correct option is C. Yes, right. Now we will move on to the next question. Now here, look. Moving on to the next question. See what does it say? This question says that. The amount in grams of potassium dichromate, the amount in grams of potassium dichromate present in 75 ml of 0.16 molar aqua solution is. This question is very easy. We simply have to apply the formula for molarity. We have to simply apply the formula for molarity and we will be able to calculate the amount of potassium dichromate that is required to form a molar solution of 1.6, 0.16. Now, we know that okay, so we know that here the formula for molarity is number of moles of solute upon the volume of solution in liters. Okay, if I have to further break it, if I have to further break it up and make it easier, how can I write, how can I write it? I can write it as given weight upon molecular weight into the volume of solution. If the volume of solution is given in ml, then we will divide it by 1000. Now on substituting the values now, what is the molarity of the solution that we have been given? We have been given 0 0.16 molar solution. So here I will write 0 0.16. All right. I will write 0 0.16 is equal to We have to calculate the given weight so it will remain as it is into, into 1000. All right. So it will be divided by what is the molar mass? It is 294 into what is the volume of solution that we have been given? It is 75 ml. Now on solving this, we will get WB equals 0 0.16 into 294 into 75 divided by 1000. Okay, you need to solve this to get the answer. Quickly solve it and let me know what should be the answer to this question. Oh, okay. Ankit has solved. He says 3.5. Yes, it is the correct answer. Raj says 3.5. Yes, both of you are absolutely correct. The answer will come out to be this once we solve it. So it was an easy question. I'm sure there should not be any problems. Now, since this question is done, let us move on to the next question. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that already and share this video with your friends so that more and more people can join in and solve these questions with us. What is the question for this? I feel there is some problem. This has been displaced somehow. Okay, no problem. We will start doing the question. The slides had gotten displaced somehow, but no problems. We will just do the question. Okay, let's see what does this question say over here. This question says that 
a solution of crab hemocyanin a pigmented protein extracted from crabs was prepared by dissolving 0.75 grams in 125 cm cube of an aqueous medium at 4 degrees celsius an osmotic pressure rise of 2.6 mm of solution was observed the solution had a density of 1 gram per cm cube determined the molecular weight of the protein now as i always say when we get such complex questions like these we should always begin by writing down what all has been given in the question it is going to make the solving part very very easy for you so main the question that you are asking um i hope i'm not pronouncing your name incorrectly please um okay so the question that you are asking how to calculate the osmotic pressure of nacl and glucose solution so you just need to wait we will come to that question just wait for the session to get over this question is also will also be discussed in today's session i will explain this question in detail once we get there all right so now coming back to this question now here a solution of crab hemocyanin we know uh, here that was prepared by dissolving 0.75 grams it means this is the solute all right and we represent the solute solute by wb so it will be equal to 0.75 grams in 125 cm cube of an aqueous solution so we know that the volume of solution is 125 cm cube we should know that 1 cm cube is equal to 1 ml so we can also write it as 125 ml cm okay this is very easy actually 1 cm cube is equal to 1 ml so we simply replaced 1 cm cube by 1 ml now here it says at 4 degree celsius so what is the temperature the temperature is 4 degree celsius on converting it to kelvin we will get 277 kelvin all right we will have to always convert temperature from degree celsius into kelvin now it says an osmotic pressure rise it means that the osmotic pressure is 2.6 mm of hg 2.6 mm of hg now if i have to convert it into atm it will be 2.6 divided by 760 atm so this is how actually we will use the osmotic pressure we will use it in terms of atm okay now it says that the solution had had a density so the density of solution we will also write it down it is 1 g per cm3 we will directly write it as ml now we have to determine the molecular weight of the protein this is what we have to determine okay now how do we do this question how do we do it we will write the formula for osmotic pressure we know that the formula for osmotic pressure is pi equals i into crt so here we know that the value of pi is 2.6 divided by 760 now here the value of i is going to be 1 because it says it is a protein and we must know that a protein is a non electrolyte a protein is a non electrolyte so non electrolytes are those which neither undergo association or dissociation in a solution is this point clear non electrolytes are those which neither undergo association uh, nor dissociation therefore for such non electrolytes we take the value of i to be 1 all right so we took the value of i here to be 1 now here this is concentration so we will substitute the values as given weight upon we do not know the molecular weight into volume of solution we know it was 125 ml then it will be multiplied by divided by 1000 because we have to convert it into liter now the value of r we will take as since it is an atm we will take the value of 0.0821 
into the temperature was 277. Quickly solve this and tell me the value for MB in the comments. What would be the value of MB from here? Let me know the value of MB in the comments. This would come out to be the value for MB. All right. This would come out to be the value for MB after solving. Okay. Ankit says the value is 39885.44 grams. Yes, correct. Ankit's answer is correct. Raj, your answer is also correct. Very good. Very good. You, I, this gives me an idea that you guys understood how to do this question. Such questions are not very difficult to do. All that you need to remember is while solving these questions, you should first always write the values which have been given. If you first write down the values that have been given in the question before you start solving, then it makes the solving process very, very easy. You will know, you will keep coming to know after what, what has to be done. All right. Now, uh, uh, I guess this question is pretty clear. Now we're going to move on to the next question. Now, here, this question says that the vapor pressure of D2O at 20 degrees Celsius is 745 mm of Fg. The vapor pressure of D2O has been given at 20 degrees Celsius to be 745 mm of Fg. Now, when 15 gram of a non-volatile compound is dissolved, it says 15 grams of a non-volatile compound is dissolved in 200 grams of D2O. The pressure changes to 730 mm of Fg. Assume the applicability of Raoult's law. Calculate the molecular weight of the compound. Now, this question is very important. And in this question, you should know what is happening. In this question, initially we had the vapor pressure of D2O to be 745 mm of Fg. After that, we added 15 gram of a non-volatile compound into that. Now, upon the addition of that non-volatile compound, the pressure actually decreased. Earlier, the pressure was 745, then it decreased to 730 mm of Fg. So what is actually happening here? What is happening here is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Here, because of the addition of a non-volatile compound, what is happening is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Now, we will apply Raoult's law in order to solve this question. Again, we will begin by writing down whatever has been given in the question. So, here the initial pressure, the initial pressure P0 was 745 the initial pressure was 745 mmHg. Then the pressure came down. After the addition of a non-volatile solute, the pressure came down to 730 mmHg. Now we have to apply Raoult's law. Okay, what else has been given? We have been given the amount of a non-volatile solute, which is 15 grams and the amount of solvent which has been given 200 grams all right now applying Raoult's law we will get p0 it will be p0 minus pt upon p0 equals chi b now here this is the initial pressure pure pressure then this is the pressure after the addition of a non-volatile solute, which is further divided by the, no, uh, by the pure pressure. It comes out to be equal to the mole fraction of the solute. The mole fraction of the solute. Now I will start substituting the values here. Now first of all, solve, solve for chi. Chi B can be written as what? Chi B can be written as number of moles of B divided by number of moles of A plus number of moles of B. This, will, this can further be written as P0 minus Pt divided by P0. It is equals to 
pass a B upon sorry this will actually be given mass of V upon molar mass of V divided by given mass of A by molar mass of A plus given mass of B divided by molar mass of B. Now we will start substituting the values. Okay. So we will start substituting the values. What did we have? P naught was 745 minus P T was 730 divided by 745. We had given weight. What was the given weight of the non-volatile solute? 15 divided by, we have to calculate its mole mass. Then the weight of PO2 that was given was 200. And if we calculate the molar mass, if we calculate the molar mass of PO2O, it will come out to be it will come out to be 20 grams. Alright? The molar mass of B2 will come out to be 20 grams. So it will be divided by 20 plus here again 15 divided by MD. Now when we solve this, when we solve this we will get 15 divided by 745 equals 15 divided by MD upon on solving this we will get 10 plus 15 upon MD. Okay, when you solve it, this will multiply by this and the denominators will cancel out. It will become 15 upon 10 MD plus 15, it is equal to 15 upon 745. Now quickly solve this and tell me the value of MD. What should be the value of MD from here? What should be the value of MD? Quickly solve and let me know in the comments what should be the value for MD. On solving, you should get this answer. 73 gram per mole, it should be the value for MD. All right. Ankit says the value is 73 gram per mole. Raj has also said an approximate value. Yes, this is the correct answer. Very good. Okay, so I am getting a hint that you all have understood this question and you will be able to solve such questions in future very easily. Now we will move on to the next question. So, now here this question says that one mole of a salt of type MX, one mole of a salt of type MX is dissolved in one kg of water. The freezing point of the solution is minus 2.4 degrees Celsius. Calculate the percent dissociation of the salt in water. What do we have to calculate? The percent dissociation of the salt in water. How do we, how do we represent dissociation? We represent dissociation by alpha. All right. So let us again start by writing whatever has been given in the question. Okay. We will write down whatever has been given in the question. We have been given, we have been given uh, the weight of solvent, that is water, is 1 kg. We have been given the moles, the moles of solute. This time we have been given the moles of solute to be 1 mole. I will erase it so that you guys don't get confused. Now, the freezing point of the solution. We have been given the freezing point. So, Tf is actually 2.4 degrees Celsius. We know that Tf naught is 0 degrees Celsius. Alright. So, we will use the formula for depression in freezing point. 
Okay, so we will use the formula for depression and freezing point. We know that it is I into Kf into N. What is Kf? What is Kf? Kf is the cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant. It is also known as cryoscopic constant. Okay, so here we will start substituting the values. Here we write zero minus minus of two point four. Okay, is equals to now. Here, over here, we know that the salt is of the type Mx, so it will dissociate as M plus plus X minus. All right, it will dissociate like this. So we know that the value of I is going to come out to be two into the value of Kf is one point eight six. The value of i actually we will have to calculate. We will have to calculate the value of i from here, and then molality. Molality is the number of moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg. The number of moles of solute upon we have been given the number of moles of solute upon mass of solvent is one. So from here we will get the value of i from two point four divided by one point eight. Okay, this is how we will get the value of I. Now that we have gotten the value of I, we will have to calculate. We will have to calculate the dissociation. So we know that M X it dissociates into M plus into X minus. So we know that the value of N is two. Okay, so we know that the value of N is two. We know that how do we write I? The formula for I, Van der factor I is the value of Van der factor I is one plus n minus one into alpha. Okay. From here we will solve for the value of I two point four divided by one point eight. Okay. So the value for I is two point four divided by one point eight. It is one plus We know the value of n is two minus one into alpha. All right, this. Now let's solve this. On solving this, solve this and let me know the answer in the comments. Solve it and tell me what should be the answer for this in the comments. So when we solve it, this is what we will get as the answer. This is going to be the answer for it. Okay, the answer is going to be this. I hope this question is clear to everyone. Okay, uh, Ankit. Says the answer is twenty nine percent, and Raj says the the answer is thirty three percent. Okay, so this actually this difference in answer is coming out to be because of the value of Kf. So if we take Kf equals one point eight, or if we take it as one point six, there will come out to be different answers. So you will take the value of Kf that has been given in the question. For such questions, you will mostly be given the value of Kf in the question itself. So you will use that answer, uh, that value, and you will be able to get the correct answer. Okay. So, uh, so this should not concern you because in questions like these, the value of Kf will be given, and you will be able to find the correct answer. Now, I hope that this.
question is clear and we will move on to the next question is this question clear i hope you all have understood now we will move on to the next question now this is the question that one of you was even asking about who was it i think somain was asking about this question now we will see how to go about and do this question see here this question says that in 200 grams of water 0.01 mole of nacl and 0.02 mole of sucrose are dissolved okay now assuming solution to be ideal the depression in freezing point of water in degree celsius will be now what we have been given again we will write down what all has been given in the question in the question we have been given the weight of solvent which is 200 grams okay the moles of nacl are 0.01 okay the moles of sucrose is 0.02 this is the mole of sucrose okay now we are assuming that the solution is ideal the depression in freezing point will be what is the formula for depression in freezing point what is the formula for depression in freezing point we write it as delta tf equals i into kf into molality so now here since we have a mixture of nacl and sucrose so we will have to take two values of i and two values of m so this formula will now be written as i1 m1 plus it is i2 m2 into kf all right now the value of i for nacl will be 2 and the value of i for sucrose will be 1 now this sucrose will it is a non electrolyte sucrose is a non electrolyte sucrose is actually a non electrolyte it neither aso undergoes association nor dissociation so it will neither undergo association nor it will undergo dissociation all right so we will take the value of i to be 1 now we will calculate the molality for each of these so the molality for nacl what is the formula for molality number of moles of solute divided by the mass of solvent in kg the moles of nacl what were the moles of nacl it was 0.01 and the mass of solvent is 200 but in kg this was given in gram so we were divided by 1000 and what is the molality of sucrose the molality of sucrose is what were the number of moles it was 0.02 okay 0.02 Thousand again and divided by two hundred. So quickly tell me the molality for NaCl and sucrose. Solve and tell me the molality for NaCl and sucrose. Solve it and tell me what should be the molality. See the molality for sucrose will come out to be zero point one, and that for NaCl will come out to be zero point zero five. For sucrose it is zero point one, and for NaCl it is zero point zero five. So.
So now if I substitute the values, if I substitute the values here, what will I get? For NACL 2 into 0 0.05 plus I for sucrose was 1 and its molality was its molality was 0 0.1 and the value of KF is 1.86. Solve this and let me know the answer. Solve for this and tell me the answer. The final answer from here is going to be 0 0.372. Yes. Ankit says that the answer is 0 0.372. Absolutely correct. Raj also says that the answer is 0 0.37. Absolutely correct. 0 0.37 is finally going to be the answer. All right. The most important thing that we learned in, the, in this question is that for non-electrolytes, in case of non-electrolytes, there occurs neither association nor dissociation. And for in such cases, we take the value of I to be 1. Okay. Good afternoon, Gautam. Gautam, you have joined in so late. The class is almost about to get over. It is 1.53. Every day the class will happen from 1 to 2 where we will discuss the previous year IIT jam questions from different topics. Please join the session at 1 p.m. and solve with me the questions for IIT jam. Now moving on to the next question. Oh, we are done with the questions for today. Gautam, you got pretty late. We are done with the questions for today. But you can go through the lecture later on. It is completely all right. Please subscribe to Chem Academy's YouTube channel for more such videos. Every day from 1 to 2, we will be solving previous year IIT jam questions in Chem Academy's Chem English session. Share this video with your friends so that they can get access to quality content. Hit that bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. It is going to be very helpful for you in your preparations. You're getting to sit at home, getting classes online. I don't think there will be any better mode of learning that you can get. Thank you, Raj. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you enjoyed today's session. We will be coming up with such sessions every day. Thank you, Dona. Okay, so we are going to end this session over here. We will be ending today's session. I will see you guys tomorrow where we will be solving IT Jam questions from another topic. Stay home, stay safe. Okay, bye everyone. Bye-bye. I will be ending the session today.